Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Before we begin, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help out our channel and it also really helps us reach others in need of assistance with these particular topics. So speaking of topics, we're going to be talking about static equilibrium today and we're going to be solving the problem shown on your screen. So we have two cables that are tied together at point C here and they're loaded as shown with this 200 kilogram weight and we need to determine the tension in AC and the tension in BC. So first things first, we are going to have to turn this 200 kilograms into newtons. So whenever you have kilograms, we're just going to multiply by the acceleration of gravity of 9.81 meters per second squared. And that gives us 1,962 newtons. Now that we have that into a force instead of a mass, we can draw our free body diagram to make this picture more simplistic. So I'm going to draw my X and Y coordinate system. Oh, that's not very straight, but close enough with our X and Y. I'm going to make my origin point point C right here. And typically you want to make your origin point um, the location where all the forces are applied, unknown cables, whatever the members are, they all interact and connect at a singular point. That's where you want your origin to be. So since the two cables and the weight are acting on point C, we're going to make point C our origin. So let's go ahead and let's throw on our known force, which is our weight. It will be acting downward since it's gravity, and that is 1,962 newtons of force. Then I am going to uh, show my tension forces, which are in the cables because cables have to be in tension rather than compression. So since this weight is pulling backwards, the cables also have to be pulling in the opposite direction, pulling backwards, trying to snap back to the reaction points relative to point C. So I am going to draw my arrow here for FBC, and I'm going to label it as FBC, and it is 75 degrees off the horizontal, so that means it is 75 degrees off the x-axis here. Then I'm going to draw my FAC in this direction, and tension, label it FAC, and then it is also 75 degrees off the vertical, so it is 75 degrees there off of the y-axis. And that's all I have for my free body diagram. So I have my unknown forces of FAC and FBC and only one singular known force of that weight of 1962 newtons. So typically with equilibrium problems, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to sum forces in the Y direction to be zero and sum forces in the X direction to be zero. Everything needs to cancel in those two directions for equilibrium to be, be held so that nothing is moving. So whenever you're not sure what your next step should be, typically going to the equilibrium equations of X and Y for a 2D system is a great point to go to. So let's just go ahead and let's do that. And we're going to sum forces in the Y direction first. Everything needs to cancel and be equal to zero. And I'm going to take all my upward um, uh, forces as positive. Everything in the downward direction will be negative. So let's go ahead and determine the component directions for our unknown forces of FBC and FAC. Well, since FAC is down and to the left, its components will be down and to the left. Since FBC is up and to the right, its components will be up and to the right. So let's go ahead and start with our unknowns here. And let's start with um, FAC. So FAC is going downward, its component is. So it'd be minus, because we're taking up as positive. So minus FAC, and this will be cosine of 75 degrees to get it over to the Y axis. So since the angle is off of the Y, we are gonna use cosine since cosine is adjacent. And then looking at FBC, well, its component is in the upward direction, so positive. FB, FBC. And since the angle is off of the X, the Y is opposite that angle. So that is sine. 
And then lastly, we have our minus weight of 1962, which is 100% in the Y, so we don't need any cosine or sine. And that's all we have in the Y direction equal to zero. Can't solve for FA, FAC or FBC with this single equation, which typically may happen with equilibrium equations. So whenever this happens, don't worry, just go to the next equilibrium equation, which is the X. So we're going to take everything to the right as a positive force, everything to the left as a negative force. <clears throat> so what we have here is that we're going to have minus FAC because its component is pointed left. And this time it will be sine of 75 here because the angle is off of the Y. So the X direction will be opposite that angle. And then plus FBC cosine of 75 degrees because the angle is off of the X. So cosine is adjacent. And then that's all we have for the X direction because the 1962 weight is 100% in the Y. It has no component in the X direction. So what we've done is that we've taken our free body diagram and we've written it in terms of equations in the X and Y direction. So we really don't need that free body diagram anymore. We can just utilize these equations here. And looking at both of these equations, you can't just use one of them to solve for the unknowns because we have too many in a single equation. But what we can do is use both of these equations and we can write one of these variables in terms of the other and then pop it into the other equation. So let's go ahead and try that. So I'm going to start with the FX equation. And I'm just going to get everything in terms of FBC is equal to FAC. So I'm going to take this FAC sine of 75 and take it to the other side of the equation. So I'm left with FBC on the left, cosine of 75 is equal to FAC sine of 75. And then just divide through by cosine of 75. So I will have FAC times sine of 75 divided by the cosine of 75. So FBC will be equal to 3.73 FAC. So now that I have... FBC in terms of FAC here, I can take this equation or this portion of the equation and plug it into my FY for FBC so that everything is in terms of FAC. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to plug back into the FY equation. So writing it out, I have minus FAC cosine of 75 plus 3.73 FAC for my FBC times the sine of 75 minus 1962 is equal to zero. So we'll just go ahead and simplify this equation down, write it out a little bit better. <clears throat> uh, da, 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 da. Oh, oh, oh. Let me see here. So when we have our minus uh, cosine of 75, we end up with minus 0 0.259 FAC. And then 3.73 times the sine of 75 gives me a plus 3.6 FAC. And then I just went ahead and took the 16 or the 1962 over to the opposite side. So combining the minus 2.59 plus the 3.6 FAC, that gives me 3.34 FAC is equal to 1962. So FAC is simply just 1962 over 3.34. And that gives me a total for FAC of 587.4 Newtons in that downward left direction. So there's one of my unknowns already solved for. So how do we solve for the other one, which is FBC? Well, we're just going to take our answer here and plug it in up here. Because FBC is 3.73 times larger than FAC. So let's go ahead and do that. 
So FBC will be 3.73 times FAC, which is 587.4 newtons. And that will give me 2,191 newtons in that general upright direction. So there are my two answers for my two uh, cable tension forces. Um, it does make sense that FBC would be so much larger than FAC, simply because, well, the force is pulling downward here and FAC is in the downward direction. So FBC would also have to counter and help out with FAC in the 1962. So it makes sense why FBC was so much larger. Now, if you want to double check these answers of 587 and 2191, the best way to do that is just to plug them both back into your equilibrium equations and see if you get close to zero. You may not exactly get zero due to rounding purposes, but getting close to zero is reaffirming that, yeah, I've done, I've done things correctly here. So let's go ahead and check that. And it looks like I plugged back into the FY equation here. So we would have a minus FAC, which is minus 587.4 times the cosine of 75, and then plus FBC, which is 2191 times the sine of 75, and then minus off 1962. And well, we get 2.3. Not exactly zero. So does that mean we've done something wrong here? Not necessarily. If we look at 2.3, the value of 2.3 versus our answer values, 2.3 over 2191. What is that percentage? Well, 2.3 divided by 2191, that's a pretty small percentage there because that gives you 0 0.00105, which is technically 0.1%. So that means that that's how far off you are in your rounding. So just because it's a little bit higher than zero, or it could have been a negative at that point, you always have to compare it to how large your answers are. And then look at that percentage. That's a real small percentage there of the 2191. So yeah, that's okay. The only reason it came out to be 2.3 is because, well, the rounding was a wasn't a hundred percent. If I were to go through with the rounding hundred percent, yeah, we would probably get right at zero, but you're not going to be able to do that in a realistic situation. So the 2.3 is close enough to zero. So that works. I hope this video was helpful. And if you want to see other uh, problems solved to this variety, please check out the other videos on our channel as we are trying to upload daily. If you haven't done so already, please like this video and subscribe to the channel because it really does help us out. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day.